Charlie was so curious about what went on inside the human body that his greatest wish was to be able to see it for himself. Charlie's Uncle Max was a scientist. One day, Charlie's Uncle Max said, Charlie, I've discovered a special green light that will make you small enough to travel inside a human body. Are you brave enough for such a journey? Oh, Uncle Max, when can I start, said Charlie. You can start by standing in front of the green light, said his Uncle Max. Charlie crossed Uncle Max's laboratory to stand in front of the green light. Are you ready, Charlie? called Uncle Max. Ready, said Charlie. Uncle Max threw the switch. Suddenly, Charlie was covered with a warm green light. Can you feel yourself getting smaller, said Uncle Max. No, said Charlie, but I can see chairs and tables getting bigger. You're almost small enough, said Uncle Max. And a moment later, he said, now, Charlie. Uncle Max bent down and picked up Charlie on a silver spoon. Where am I going, shouted Charlie in a voice as small as he was. I'm going to put you on the tip of my tongue, said Uncle Max. The rest of the travel plans are up to you. Charlie jumped from the spoon onto Uncle Max's tongue. The first thing Charlie noticed was that Uncle Max's teeth looked like mountains, so he guessed he must be pretty small. He began to walk across Uncle Max's tongue, which must have tickled Uncle Max, because suddenly Uncle Max sucked in his breath. With his breath, Uncle Max also sucked in Charlie, who found himself slipping and sliding head over heels down Uncle Max's windpipe. At the end of the slide, Charlie hit something soft as a bed. He saw hundreds of little pink air sacs all around him, like tiny balloons. I must be in Uncle Max's lungs, said Charlie. Look at those air sacs fill up and empty out every time Uncle Max breathes. Charlie could see blood vessels inside the air sacs. So this is how fresh air gets into the blood, said Charlie. The air goes right through the sacs into the bloodstream. Charlie looked around some more. Sure is lots of dust in here. He took out a handkerchief and began to clean the sacks. This must have tickled Uncle Max again, because suddenly he sneezed. Achoo! In one terrific swoosh, Charlie felt himself being sucked up by Uncle Max's windpipe and into his mouth again. Charlie hardly had time to get on his feet before he could feel Uncle Max swallowing. Down Charlie slipped and slid once more. Only this time, he went down a different tube into Uncle Max's stomach. For a while, Charlie just floated around on a breadcrumb, watching Uncle Max's stomach juices melt down Uncle Max's dinner. This is interesting, said Charlie, only my breadcrumb is getting smaller and smaller. Suddenly, a trap door in the bottom of the stomach opened. And Charlie found himself in Uncle Max's small intestine. I guess the stomach's work is over, said Charlie. Uncle Max's dinner has been turned into juice. Charlie swam in the juice through the little openings in the intestine straight into Uncle Max's bloodstream. He knew the bloodstream carried air and food all over Uncle Max's body. And if I swim along Uncle Max's bloodstream, I can visit any part of Uncle Max's body too. Now, where do I want to go, said Charlie. Grabbing a blood cell for a raft, Charlie paddled his way toward Uncle Max's heart. The bloodstream soon went so fast that Charlie knew he was getting close to the heart. The closer he got, the louder and stronger the heart beat. Look at that heart pump, said Charlie, as it came into sight. The heart sure has to work hard to pump blood all day and all night, too. Better hang on. Here we go through the heart. With one strong pump, Charlie was pulled into Uncle Max's heart. With the next pump, Charlie shot out of the other side of the heart like a rocket. moment Charlie had been waiting for. He was off to visit Uncle Max's brain. 
Charlie knew that the brain was the most marvelous part of the human body. Everything we do, every movement we make, everything we think about, all this is possible because of the brain. It controls every thought and every action, said Charlie, remembering all he had learned. When Charlie arrived in Uncle Max's brain, he found even though different parts of the brain control different activities, all the brain looked pretty much the same. It's like a big gray sponge, said Charlie, walking carefully through Uncle Max's head. As he walked, thousands of tiny electric sparks whizzed around him, moving back and forth through the brain. Sure is a lot going on up here, said Charlie. Those must be messages from Uncle Max's nerves coming in and going out of his brain. Wonder what Uncle Max is doing and thinking. Charlie wandered around some more to get the feel of the place. I better use my chart, said Charlie, taking it out of his pocket, so I can find which part of the brain does what. Let's see. The largest part of the brain, which covers the whole top, is the thinking part. It also lets you smell, taste, feel, see, and hear. Charlie climbed down into the second part of Uncle Max's brain. This is the part of the brain that helps your muscles remember all the things they have learned, like walking, running, or riding a bicycle. Charlie went further down into the third part of Uncle Max's brain. This part of the brain sends messages only to special muscles. It keeps your heart and your stomach and lungs working, whether you think about it or not. Suddenly, Charlie felt a change in Uncle Max's brain. The sparks began to get brighter and to fly faster and faster. I know what's happening, said Charlie. Uncle Max is beginning to worry about me. All that worry is making it dangerous in here. I think I better get out. Charlie hurried to the front of Uncle Max's head. He looked at his chart to find Uncle Max's right eyeball. He climbed along the nerve that led from the brain to the eye. Once inside the eye, Charlie looked for the hole where Uncle Max's tears came out. There it is, he said, in the corner. Charlie crawled out of the hole. It felt good to be out. Slowly, he climbed down to stand on the tip of Uncle Max's nose. Hey, Uncle Max! I'm out, shouted Charlie. Where are you, Charlie, said Uncle Max. Cross your eyes, said Charlie, and you'll see me on the end of your nose. Uncle Max crossed his eyes. There was Charlie, jumping and waving. Uncle Max picked up the silver spoon. Climb onto the spoon, Charlie, he said. How was the trip? It was great, said Charlie, but I wish I was my own size again. This red light will do it, said Uncle Max placing the spoon with Charlie on it in front of the big red lamp. In no time, Charlie stood next to Uncle Max, his old size once more. Where would you like to go on your next trip, said Uncle Max. The kitchen, said Charlie. I'm hungry.